Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. In today's video, I will be showing you guys how I made a binary adder in SaveKit. Now before I show you guys the product in game, I will first quickly explain how binary addition works. And before I can do that, I will first quickly explain what binary numbers are. Binary numbers consist of zeros and ones, and you can write regular numbers as binary numbers. But how do we do that exactly? Well, we can envision multiple columns, we we'll use 5 in this example. The column all the way on the right resembles 2 to the power of 0, which is equal to 1. The column to the left of that resembles 2 to the power of 1, which is equal to 2. And once to the left of that is 4, then 8, then 16. And this continues for as many columns as you want. Now we can write regular numbers as binary numbers by putting a 1 in the columns that sum up to the regular number. So if we wanted to write 3 as a binary number, 3 is equal to 1 plus 2. So we'll put a 1 in the columns for 1 and 2. And we fill up the other columns with zeros to get the binary number for 3. That's great, but how do we do binary addition then? Well, not exactly like this. In this example, we'll be adding 13 and 28, which should give 41, or the binary number 101001. We start off by writing one binary number below the other. We then shift all the numbers to the right, and we fit in a zero for any empty spaces. We then make use of an XOR gate, which outputs a 1 if and only if one of the inputs is 1. This is different from a regular OR gate, which also opens a 1 when both inputs are equal to 1. So all the way on the right, we start off with 1 plus 0, which gives us a 1. Then we get 0 plus 0, which gives us a 0. Now we get 1 plus 1, which according to the XOR gate should give us a 0. But it's equal to 2. Now 2 can be efficient as a 10, meaning we write down a 0 in the current column and we use the 1 as a carry for the column to the left, where we then have 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is equal to 3. Now, 3 is equal to 2 plus 1, and since we can envision 2 as a 10, we can envision 3 as 10 plus 1. This is equal to 11, so we write down a 1 in the current column, and we use the other one as a carry, where we get 1 plus 1, which gives us a 0 in the current column, and a 1 as a carry. If we write down the 1, we get the binary number for 41. That's great! But how do we put this inside of SaveGIS? Well, I came to one conclusion, which was to not use any XOR gates at all. You see, making an XOR gate in SafeKiss was pretty complicated, and there was also an easier way to do this. See, with binary addition, you can only get four possible outputs. If we add two zeros together, we get a zero. If we add a one with a zero, we get a one. If we add two ones, we get a zero with a carry. And if we add three ones, we get a one with a carry. Then all that's left to do is link up the inputs to the corresponding outputs, and there you have it, we be done. But how do we do this exactly? Let me introduce you to counting mechanism. If you didn't know yet, and you probably don't, but I actually made a multi-lap track in the SaveGist with a functioning lap counter that counts the amount of laps that have been driven. Now, you may be thinking, how is this relevant at all? Well, we can use the lap counting mechanism to count the amount of inputs that have been sent into the system and then link those up to the corresponding outputs. So, the counting mechanism. This is what it looks like. Over here, we have inputs in the form of hay bales that go through. The first hay bale would hit this first block and it would then go through and hit this hay bale, which clears the block out of the way. This opens the path for the second hay bale, which would then repeat this process for the second block. Now, if we look at it from a top-down view, we see that the input is over here, the first block is over here, then we get the second block right over here, and whatever happens after the final block at the end. Now, the part on the right is basically useless now. We'll have to change this for the binary calculator so that the inputs are linked up with the proper outputs. Now, for clarification, this is where the inputs end up, and these are their corresponding outputs. Now, as you can see, 1 and 3 should output a 1 in the current column, and 2 and 3 should give a carry. But the third table doesn't need to give a carry specifically, because that already happens for the second one. And the second input also needs to block the first input from outputting it in the current column. 
but there was still an important issue. You see, if we send a Habel through, it will hit the first block and then go towards the output. Now if we also get a Habel in the form of a carry, the first Habel will go through the second block towards the output, even though the second Habel is supposed to stop this from happening. So the fix for this was to add another input, we'll call this the calculate input, which will activate after we're done setting up the calculation. This way, the first Habel won't go directly to the output after the first block, but would rather wait for the calculate input to be activated. This way, the second Habel will have enough time to get to the second block in time before the first Habel, which has to wait for the calculate input to be activated, gets launched by this input towards the second block, where it will then get blocked by the second Habel. Now, in game, this is what the calculate input looks like. So, with that being said, this is what the mechanism looks like. Now, I know this can look a bit messy, so I made this amazing drawing to help me explain it a little bit better. Now, we'll quickly move this over to the top left so that we can have some in-game footage on the bottom right as well. So, first off, the first input Habel will hit the first block and then also clear this first block. It then goes to the place where it will wait for the calculated input to be activated. The second Habel then makes its way past the first block and clears the second block. It then also hits the carry Habel and gets in the position where it will block the first Habel. The carry Habel then makes its way to the next mechanism, whilst the calculate Habel sends the first Habel towards the output where it will get blocked by the second Habel. During this, the third Habel will also arrive which will pass by all the other blocks that have been cleared by the previous Habels. It then ends up behind the second Habel, causing it to still pass through and give an output. Now, because I only made the mechanism one block wide, it was very easy to copy mechanisms next to each other. This way, the carry output from one mechanism would end up in the input section of the next mechanism. Now all that was left to do was to take the mechanism, add some inputs and outputs, link everything up, and boom! There we have it, a binary counter in Savegist. Now all you have to do is just sit back, relax, take some popcorn on your lap, as you watch this calculator that can only do addition, perform some calculations in Savegist. Enjoy. And that marks the end of this video. If you enjoyed, then be sure to leave a like, it would really make my day. If you want to see more videos, then be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications if you don't want to miss any of my future videos. I would like to thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.